Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. A few weeks ago, it was revealed in an FCC document that LG will no longer include ATSC 3.0 tuners in their TVs. Since then, the topic has been picked up by various media outlets, and many of you have asked me for my take on it. To those of you who might not be familiar with the technical terms, ATSC 3.0, also known as Next Gen TV, is the next generation over-the-air TV standard launched in several large markets, which I covered in many previous videos. It requires a new tuner in order to receive, which most of you do not have since it's only offered in a select few set-top boxes and high-end TVs made by Sony, Samsung, Hisense, and until recently, LG. In this video, I'll explain exactly why LG dropped support of ATSC 3.0 and whether other TV manufacturers will follow. If you're a cord cutter or use an antenna, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. So why is LG no longer including ATSC 3.0 tuners in their high-end TVs? Does it have to do with low consumer demand or DRM encryption? According to LG, the decision to drop ATSC 3.0 was a result of a court ruling over a patent dispute. Specifically, the company Constellation Designs claimed that they developed part of the A322 physical layer used on ATSC 3.0, which relates to the broadcast signal. Constellation Designs sued LG in court, the verdict ruled against LG, and required them to pay $6.75 for every TV sold with the Next Gen logo. If you would like to learn more details about the specifics in regards to the patent dispute, make sure to check out Lon Seidman's video on the topic as he explains it in great detail. You can find it linked in the description of this video. The fact that LG dropped ATSC 3.0 over what was a relatively small $1.6 million verdict Kind of surprised me because if next gen TV really was an important high demand feature, LG would continue to support it and simply pass the costs onto the consumer. Doing the math with the $1.6 million verdict at about $6.75 per TV, it appears that LG only sold about 250,000 next gen enabled TVs over the years, which is not many. Even with this number, I suspect that only a fraction of these TVs were purchased strictly for next-gen TV. Most likely they were purchased for other high-end features like an OLED display. It'll be interesting to see if sales of LG TVs are even impacted next year without ATSC 3.0. Will Constellation Designs, the company that sued LG, go after other TV manufacturers like Sony, Samsung, and Hisense? If they do, will these companies also drop ATSC 3.0? To be honest, there isn't an answer as most of what you're hearing is rumors based around speculation. I did ask someone in the TV industry if Sony, Samsung, and Hisense might be sued next. He told me that it depends on whether the companies have any agreements with Constellation Designs in regards to the A322 layer used on ATSC 3.0. If they don't, they can be sued next. According to a TVTech.com article, a legal representative of Constellation Design said that neither Sony, nor Samsung, nor Hisense have secured licenses for use of the company's non-uniform Constellation technology. Zoinks. Looks like there's a chance that these companies may be sued next. The patent dispute with LG shows how support for ATSC 3.0 or next-gen TV can be dropped on a whim. This isn't a problem with the current ATSC 1.0 TV standard. You see, any tuner that has an ATSC 1.0 chip in it will always work even without support. However, ATSC 3.0 needs constant updates from the manufacturer to decode DRM encryption and for future features released on the TV standard. Should the manufacturer decide to drop support for it like LG, the TV may no longer work for ATSC 3.0 down the road. My personal opinion is that too many entities involved in this new TV standard are trying to make as much money as possible and it's screwing things up. You have companies making money through patents, which is normal for new technology, but then you also have companies like Dolby making money through licensing of their AC4 audio codec, 
The A3SA making money by requiring DRM certification, which costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. TV stations making money through targeted ads and quite possibly using DRM to put valuable content behind a paywall down the road. ATSC 3.0 is not about the viewers. It's about making money. If it was truly about the viewers, broadcasters wouldn't have prematurely turned on DRM encryption, which locked HE Home Run and Zapperbox users out of accessing some local channels. This is literally what I get from my Zapperbox in the Philadelphia market. Look at all of the channels that are encrypted. It's absolutely ridiculous. All these issues back up what I have been saying that we are still in the very, very, very early stages of ATSC 3.0. When I first covered this new TV standard, it seemed that new ATSC 3.0 TVs and set-top boxes were comparable to early ATSC 1.0 tuners in the way they could be purchased and just work for years to come. However, it now seems that some kinks need to be ironed out. Next week, I'll post a video that shows how even TVs with built-in next-gen tuners have issues decoding DRM encrypted channels. In it, I will continue to voice my concern that DRM encryption just inconveniences both the TV manufacturers and consumers. To the powers that be who watch my videos, I know you're watching, consider my point that on top of the risk of patent lawsuits, if there are enough inconveniences on the manufacturing side, such as the cost to get DRM certified and required long-term support of it, that some TV manufacturers may just say, why bother with ATSC 3.0? It doesn't seem to be in high demand, it's costing money, and these tech YouTubers with hundreds of thousands of followers aren't happy with the way things are going, so why bother? I understand that all new technology has kinks that need to be ironed out over time. My concern is that DRM encryption is only inconvenience in manufacturers and consumers, which increases the chance that ATSC 3.0 as a whole will flop, whether it be from consumers deciding not to upgrade to next-gen TV with the restrictions on DVRs and network tuners, manufacturers deciding to drop it because of limited demand or patent disputes, or just not supporting it in the long term. Anyway, to summarize things, LG's decision to drop ATSC 3.0 was mainly based on the court ruling of a patent dispute, although I wouldn't be surprised if low consumer demand contributed to it. I can't say whether or not Constellation Designs, the company that sued LG, will go after other TV manufacturers. Based on information in this tvtech.com article, there's certainly a chance, but it's also possible that the companies might come to an agreement before sending it to court. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Be sure to check out this tvtech.com article linked in the description to read what ATSC President Malin Noland had to say about the patent dispute and LG's decision to drop ATSC 3.0. Thanks so much for watching this YouTube video. And additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon, or as a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos helped you cut the cord and you'd like to help support them while gaining exclusive perks, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video and you can also click the thanks button. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA or sign up to my email list linked in the description. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related videos and have an awesome day.